The Effectiveness Revolution, Seven Habits to Transform Your Life, written and published by N. Gasmind. Do you ever find yourself working tirelessly, pouring energy into your goals, yet feeling like something just isn't clicking? Maybe decision-making feels overwhelming, important relationships are strained, or you yearn for a sense that your work truly matters. What if there was a way to break this cycle, unlocking a new level of effectiveness, clarity, and genuine satisfaction? Imagine achieving your goals with less struggle, navigating challenges with greater resilience, and building relationships fueled by trust and mutual understanding. Picture yourself waking up each day with a renewed sense of purpose and drive. This isn't just a dream, it's entirely possible. The principles you're about to discover have transformed the lives of countless people, from stressed out employees to visionary leaders, from frustrated partners to deeply connected families. They can do the same for you. In this book, I'll guide you through the seven habits of highly effective people. This isn't another collection of productivity hacks. It's a proven system for redefining your approach to work, relationships, and life itself. Please help support the channel by hitting the subscribe button and like the video. Thanks for inspiring us to create more content for you. Get ready to tap into the extraordinary potential within you. Let's dive in. Lesson 1. Own Your Life, The Power of Proactivity Okay, picture this, you're stuck in the worst traffic jam, late for something super important. Do you sit there, fuming and cursing other drivers, totally understandable? Or do you pop on a podcast, practice a few deep breaths, and accept it's just out of your hands? That's the difference between being reactive and proactive. Reactive is letting your world happen to you, getting tossed around by every little thing. Proactive is about choosing your response, owning your life, one choice at a time. See, the truth is, we can't control everything. Weather, traffic, annoying relatives, they'll always throw curveballs. But what we can control is how we react. That's our circle of influence where all our power lies. Focus on what you can change your thoughts, actions, how you spend your time. Whining is easy, but it solves nothing. Proactive people seek solutions or figure out how to make the best of the situation. Think about it like this, you're gardening. You can't control how much rain falls, but you can choose the plants that thrive in your climate, pull weeds, and add fertilizer. Things within your power to make that garden flourish. Your life works the same way. Here's the thing, being proactive isn't just about solving problems. It's about shaping your whole mindset. It's about flipping the script in your head from this is happening to me to okay, how can I work with this? It's a small change with massive ripple effects. So how do you become one of those magical proactive people? Here's the start. Identify your triggers, what makes you feel stressed or out of control. Recognizing those is the first step toward changing your response. Language shift swap victimizing words can't have to for empowering ones choose to will try. Small wins start with one small thing you usually complain about. Instead, make a plan to address it or accept it gracefully. Focus on the long game sometimes. Proactive means taking a step back, breathing, and choosing a response that serves you better in the long run even if it's harder in the moment. Picture this, your boss is being a total jerk, again. React, and you might snap back, damaging the relationship. Proactive means maybe pausing, taking some space, and later choosing to address things calmly and professionally. Not easy, but it builds the kind of life you want to live. You're not helpless. Each moment you choose how you'll show up. Will you let life drag you along? Or will you take the steering wheel? Choose wisely because proactivity is the superpower of creating a life you actually love. Lesson two, your compass for success, the power of goal setting. Ever feel like you're running around like a crazy person, super busy, yet never actually getting where you want to be? It's like being on a ship without a destination, lots of movement, zero progress. That's life without goals. Goals are your North Star, your reason for getting out of bed in the morning. 
They give you something to aim for, a sense of direction so you're not just wandering in circles. And listen, setting goals isn't just about huge life transformations, though that's awesome too. Goals can be as small as committing to 10 minutes of meditation each day. It's about deciding what matters to you and making it happen. Here's the thing about goals, they gotta be specific, measurable, something that fires you up. Be happier is nice, but too vague. Save $1,000 for that dream vacation by September. Now we're talking. This is where some goal setting frameworks can be super helpful, like the smart goal system specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, time bound. Don't get overwhelmed by that achievable part. Big, ambitious goals are awesome, but they're made of tiny, everyday steps. Want to run a marathon? Start with couch to 5K. Want to write a novel? Focus on 500 words a day. It's consistency, not giant leaps, that moves mountains. Ready to upgrade your life with some goals? Here's how to get started. Brain dump take 20 minutes. Write down everything you kinda, sorta want to do, be, or have. No judgment, just get it out of your head. Find your fires what on that list makes you feel excited, even a bit scared. Those are the ones worth chasing. Get smart, take a few big goals and break them down using the SMART framework or something similar. Action steps, what's one tiny thing you can do today to move toward your goal? Schedule it, then do it. See, goals aren't about making you feel bad for what you haven't done. They're about giving you a roadmap to an awesome life. It's time to stop drifting and start designing where your ship's heading. Lesson three, master your time, master your life. Let's be real, there's never enough time. Work, family, friends, chores. Trying to squeeze a sliver of me time in there. It's a constant battle. But here's the secret, it's not about having more time. It's about using the time you do have wisely. That's what prioritization is all about. Think of your to-do list like a jar. You've got big rocks, major goals, pebbles, routine tasks, and sand, tiny distractions. Trying to cram in everything at once. Starting with the sand and hoping the big stuff fits. Nope. But put the big rocks in first, then the pebbles settle around them, and then there's still room for some sand. Prioritization is your big rock first strategy. There's this thing called the time management matrix sounds fancy, but it's super helpful. It divides tasks into four categories. Urgent important crises, deadlines, gotta do them now. Important, not urgent goals, relationships, stuff that matters but won't explode if you miss a day. Urgent, not important busy work, other people's problems they throw on you. Neither urgent nor important time wasters, mindless scrolling dot 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 tempting but pointless. Most people live in quadrants one and three always reacting and never truly in control. Mastering your time means spending way more time in quadrant two. That's where the good stuff happens. Here's the challenge those quadrant two tasks take work. It's easy to say eat healthy is important, but when hunger hits, grabbing takeout is urgent. This is where willpower and saying no come in, saying no to distractions, to other people's demands, even to your own impulsiveness sometimes. Ready to upgrade your time management? Map your time track what you do for a few days, be brutally honest. How much time gets sucked into meaningless stuff? Say no often not being rude, it's self-preservation. Can't help right now, maybe tomorrow is your new best friend. Beat procrastination, break tasks into tiny steps, set timers, just start. Momentum is your superpower here. Mastering your time isn't easy, it's a daily fight, but the alternative is feeling like life's just a blur of to-do lists and stress. When you prioritize what truly matters, you start building a life worth living, not just surviving. Lesson four, the science of successful habits. We are creatures of habit. From our morning routines to the way we unwind after work, much of our daily lives unfold in familiar patterns. Some of these habits serve us well, while others hold us back. 
understanding the mechanics of how habits form provides the framework for deliberate change empowering us to construct lives filled with positive and fulfilling routines. The neurological basis of habits. Our brains are remarkably adaptable and prioritize efficiency. When we repeat a behavior consistently, the brain creates neural pathways that solidify the pattern, making it easier and faster to engage in the behavior over time. Think of it like carving a trail in the wilderness the more times a path is walked the clearer and easier to traverse it becomes. This habit formation process is described by what's known as the habit loop comprised of three key elements. The cue the cue serves as the trigger that initiates the habit. It could be an external factor such as a specific time of day, location, or preceding action or an internal one such as an emotion or thought pattern. The routine, this refers to the behavior itself, the core of the habit. This can be as simple as brushing your teeth or as complex as a multi-step exercise routine. The reward, the reward is the positive reinforcement that drives the habit loop. It can be a tangible reward like a favorite snack, an emotional payoff, a feeling of accomplishment, or even a physiological response that dopamine release associated with certain activities. Harnessing the habit loop for transformation. To create new, positive habits or change existing ones, we must deliberately manipulate the elements within this loop. Here's a step-by-step -step approach. Identify your target habit. Choose a specific, measurable behavior you'd like to cultivate or change. Attempting broad goals like get organized leads to overwhelm. Instead, Focus on targeted modifications like spend 15 minutes each evening tidying my workspace. Decipher your cue, what reliably precedes the desired or undesired behavior. Understanding your triggers is essential for either creating cues for a new positive habit or recognizing the triggers that derail you. Perhaps stress triggers snacking recognizing this is the first step towards choosing a different response. Design a meaningful reward. Choose a reward that genuinely motivates you, not something you think you should enjoy. Artificial rewards won't solidify the habit loop as effectively. Embrace consistency. This is where many well-intentioned attempts fail. Aim for daily practice of your new habit, even if it starts small. Five minutes of tidying is better than zero. Anticipate and adapt to setbacks. Slipping back into old patterns is natural. Don't view this as failure. Acknowledge, analyze was the trigger stronger than expected and recommit to your desired habit. Important considerations. Small wins matter. Building successful habits isn't always about grand overhauls. Celebrate small victories to solidify the reward aspect of the loop and boost your motivation. Habit stacking link a new habit to an existing one leveraging the power of established cues. For example, decide to do three push-ups immediately after your morning coffee. Environment matters. Manipulate your environment to nudge you towards desired habits. Keep fresh fruit visible. Leave gym clothes out as a reminder, etc. Building strong, supportive habits is an ongoing journey, not a one-time fix. Be patient with yourself. Prioritize consistency over perfection and don't underestimate the incredible transformative power of small, daily actions. Lesson 5. Mastering proactive communication for stronger relationships. Effective communication forms the bedrock of successful interactions, whether in personal life or professional pursuits. Shifting from reactive communication patterns to a more proactive approach empowers us to express our needs with clarity navigate conflict constructively, and forge deeper connections with those around us. Proactive VS. Reactive communication, identifying the difference. Reactive communicators often respond impulsively, driven by emotions rather than careful thought. They may prioritize defensiveness, blame, or seeking approval over truly understanding or resolving a situation. This often leads to misunderstandings and resentment Proactive communicators approach interactions with intention. They consider their own needs and goals and the perspectives of others. 
proactive communication involves clarity choosing words that accurately convey your thoughts and feelings while minimizing the risk of misinterpretation assertiveness expressing yourself directly and respectfully advocating for your needs without aggression or passivity ownership taking responsibility for your own emotions and experiences focusing on i statements rather than accusatory language the essential skill of active listening proactive communication cannot exist in isolation it requires active listening this means focusing fully on the speaker seeking to understand their message from their perspective without prematurely formulating your response here's how to cultivate this skill maintain attentive body language relaxed posture eye contact and subtle nods demonstrate your engagement with the speaker ask clarifying questions this shows you're invested in understanding such as could you say more about or it sounds like you're feeling yes that accurate summarize and validate reflect back what you've heard and acknowledge the speaker's emotions so you're saying and that made you feel navigating difficult conversations with grace even with the best intentions challenging conversations are inevitable here's how to approach them proactively timing is key when emotions are running high productive conversation is unlikely if possible agree to revisit the issue when everyone is calmer set a collaborative tone frame it as a problem you're tackling together let's figure out how to make this work for both of us instead of adversarial language focus on solutions dwelling on past negativity hinders progress guide the conversation towards what can be done differently going forward remember truly effective communication is an ongoing learning process there will be setbacks but a continued commitment to proactive communication yields stronger relationships increased clarity in pursuing your goals and reduced frustration for all involved lesson 6 the power of synergy collaboration for success the adage two heads are better than one captures the essence of synergy the idea that when individuals work together cooperatively the result can far exceed the sum of their individual efforts in a world focused on individualism tapping into the power of synergy presents an opportunity for personal and collective growth understanding synergy and its benefits Synergy isn't just about teamwork, it's about harnessing diverse perspectives, skill sets, and experiences to create something extraordinary. Benefits of synergistic collaborations include amplified creativity, diverse viewpoints spark new ideas and solutions that may not have been accessible within a lone individual's mindset. Enhanced problem solving, synergy allows for examining issues from all angles. leading to more comprehensive and effective solutions increased efficiency when tasks are shared and skills are complementary teams can achieve more with less wasted time and effort reduced conflict a synergistic mindset prioritizes win-win solutions where everyone's needs are considered minimizing interpersonal friction fostering synergistic relationships building synergistic relationships whether in your workplace or personal life requires intentional effort here's how to cultivate this environment embrace openness actively solicit different perspectives even if they initially challenge your own diverse viewpoints are the fuel for innovation seek first to understand listen deeply to others before pushing your own agenda the goal is to create a shared understanding of the problem or opportunity at hand check defensiveness at the door approach disagreements with curiosity not defensiveness remember you're working towards a solution that benefits everyone value and leverage differences individual strengths and expertise when combined strategically create something greater than any single individual could achieve building trust the foundation of synergy trust is the essential bedrock of any successful collaboration Here's how to cultivate it. Reliability, follow through on commitments consistently, building confidence in your integrity and dependability. Transparency, be open and honest about your intentions, 
goals and any potential challenges that may arise. Extend grace, perfection is unrealistic. Extend forgiveness for occasional missteps, demonstrating that the relationship is valued above always being right. Remember, cultivating a synergistic attitude is a journey. Each collaborative interaction provides an opportunity to practice and strengthen these skills, bringing you closer to unlocking the extraordinary results possible when individuals focus on collective success. Lesson 7. Transform teamwork, building a collaborative culture with the power of the seven habits. Picture this, a workplace where everyone feels motivated, ideas flow freely, and reaching goals together is the norm. Sound too good to be true. Unfortunately for many, the reality is much different. Frustrating miscommunications, stalled projects, and resentment seem to be the default state. But it doesn't have to be this way. The seven habits of highly effective people give us a powerful roadmap towards building a truly collaborative workplace, benefiting both the individual and the organization's overall success. Let's focus on three core habits that can transform the way your team functions being proactive, seeking first to understand, and focusing on win-win solutions. Be proactive. In the workplace, being proactive means taking ownership of your role, anticipating challenges, and seeking solutions rather than waiting for problems to blow up in your face. Think back to times when unresolved resentment has held a team back. Perhaps a coworker felt their ideas were constantly ignored, so they disengaged and the team missed out on their valuable input. A proactive approach breaks this cycle. Instead of waiting for resentment to fester, proactive team members speak up respectfully when they feel unheard. Proactive leaders create a culture where this kind of feedback is welcomed and most importantly, acted upon. It might mean setting clear expectations for how ideas will be considered, or having a regular temperature check where team members openly share what's working and what's not. Proactivity is about preventing problems, not just reacting to them. Seek first to understand, then to be understood. Truly effective communication isn't a one-way street. Active listening is a superpower in the workplace, building trust and opening the door to better solutions. When teammates feel genuinely heard, resentment melts away, replaced with a sense of shared purpose. Let's revisit that scenario of the unheard team member. A proactive leader, armed with this seek to understand habit, doesn't assume they know the whole story. They take the time to listen deeply, asking clarifying questions to uncover the heart of the frustration. Perhaps it's not that their ideas were bad, but the timing of their suggestions felt disruptive to others. Understanding this paves the way for a proactive solution, perhaps creating a designated time during meetings for brainstorming, or having an idea board for asynchronous contributions. I think win-win, at least you's. Too often, achieving a goal in the workplace feels like a zero-sum game. Someone has to lose for others to succeed. This mindset breeds competition instead of collaboration. The win-win habit shifts this entirely. It's about finding solutions that address the key needs of all involved, not settling for half-hearted compromises. Think about how this applies to a lack of clear goals. It's not just the end project that needs to be a win, it's as the journey itself. Team members need to feel a sense of progress and achievement throughout. A proactive leader using a win-win mindset involves the team in goal setting. They break down goals into smaller milestones with clear ownership for each step. This way, everyone experiences a sense of winning throughout, boosting morale and keeping the team aligned. Changing your workplace culture, say. These habits aren't quick fixes, but a commitment to a new way of operating. Start by reflecting, where's a workplace friction point where I could apply one of these habits? What's one small step I could take tomorrow to start making that shift? True transformation happens one action at a time, and the results are well worth the effort. Lesson 8. Your mindset makes the difference. The six paradigms of interaction. How we approach our interactions with others profoundly shapes the outcome. 
Are you walking into conversations with a competitive edge, ready to win at all costs? Do you find yourself always conceding to keep the peace? Or are you searching for those elusive solutions where everyone genuinely benefits? Stephen Covey outlines six common paradigms, or mindsets, surrounding human interaction. Understanding these paradigms is the first step towards building stronger relationships, better teamwork, and more fulfilling negotiations, both in the workplace and in our personal lives. Let's start with the ideal. Win-win. In this collaborative mindset, you're not focused on beating the other person, but rather on finding a solution that leaves everyone feeling positive and invested. Win-win agreements lay the groundwork for trust, long-term partnerships, and a sense that everyone's efforts are valued. Think about successful business deals, team projects where everyone's strengths were utilized, or even those household compromises that actually left everyone happier. Now let's explore a common pitfall. Win-lose. This stems from a belief that your success hinges on someone else's failure. It's about outshining a colleague, getting the best deal regardless of the long-term cost, or always needing to be right in an argument. While you might experience short-term gains, the win-lose mindset can create resentment, damaged relationships, and missed opportunities for future collaboration. On the opposite end of the spectrum is lose-win. This involves putting others' needs above your own to avoid conflict or simply to please people. The trouble with consistently putting yourself last is that it breeds resentment and can lead to burnout. When you don't communicate your own needs, you're essentially teaching others that they don't matter. The remaining paradigms lose-lose, win and win-win, or no deal, are equally important. But for the sake of this lesson, we've focused on the most common and powerful ones. Taking action. Now it's time for some self-reflection. Over the next week, pay close attention to your interactions in various settings work, family, and social. Notice which paradigms come into play with yourself and with others. Could a different mindset have created a more positive experience or result? It takes practice to shift deeply ingrained patterns of interaction. However, becoming aware of these paradigms is the first step towards consciously choosing the mindset that will lead to more satisfying outcomes for everyone involved. It's a game changer for achieving success that's both meaningful and sustainable, whether it's in your career negotiations or your closest relationships. Lesson 9, the lose-lose paradigm when everyone goes down. You might wonder why would anyone intentionally strive for a situation where nobody wins? The lose-lose paradigm isn't always a conscious choice but rather a destructive pattern that can emerge, especially in highly charged or long-term conflicts. Think of it like this. Imagine two people locked in a bitter rivalry. Each action is taken with the sole intent of sabotaging and hurting the other, even if it means self-harm in the process. Revenge, spite, and a deep desire to bring the other person down become the primary motivators. Any concept of rational decision-making or mutual benefit flies out the window. Examples of lose-lose scenarios are sadly abundant. Protracted legal battles the individuals involved might become so focused on inflicting damage on their opponent that they drain their resources and destroy their own reputations in the process. Relationship breakdowns when hurt and resentment run deep, couples or family members sometimes engage in mutual destructive behaviors, harming each other emotionally and psychologically even if it means compromising their own long-term well-being. Workplace feuds office politics can fester into lose-lose situations where productivity suffers, good employees leave, and the overall morale of the company is damaged. Why it's so dangerous? The lose-lose mindset is like a downward spiral. It perpetuates negativity, breeds resentment, and destroys possibilities for cooperation or reconciliation. Everyone caught in its web suffers, even if the initial intention was simply to defend oneself or seek justice. Breaking the cycle. If you find yourself in a lose-lose situation, the first step is recognizing the destructive pattern. Then, 
even though it might be the hardest thing to do, focus on shifting your perspective. Can you find a way to let go of the need for revenge and prioritize your own well-being, regardless of what the other person does? Sometimes, the best way out of a lose-lose scenario is to disengage. If communication breaks down and the other party is committed to a destructive path, protecting yourself might mean walking away, even if it feels unsatisfying in the short term. A word on justice. There's a difference between pursuing justified action against wrongdoing and a lose-lose mentality. Seeking justice through proper channels is important, but fixating on revenge or intentionally trying to inflict as much damage as you've suffered only perpetuates the cycle of pain. The lose-lose paradigm is fueled by revenge and a need to bring others down, even at your own expense. It creates a downward spiral of negativity with long-lasting damaging consequences for everyone involved. Recognizing the pattern is crucial for breaking free. Sometimes, walking away might be the healthiest choice. Lesson 10, the wind paradigm, is it always bad? On the surface, the wind paradigm seems positive, right? Striving for personal success and achieving your goals is a good thing, isn't it? The problem arises when your concept of winning is entirely independent of how it impacts others. In this mindset, your focus is primarily on getting what you want, regardless of whether someone else loses in the process. You might be comparing yourself to others, feeling the need to be the best at everything, or seeing situations as zero-sum games where your gain must equal someone else's loss. Here's where things get tricky. Context matters. In some cases, the win paradigm is appropriate. During a competitive sports match, for example, each team will naturally strive to win, and there can only be one victor. Similarly, applying for a job with limited spots means you're aiming to win against other candidates. The danger zone. The trouble starts when the win mindset bleeds into situations where collaboration and mutual benefit would be more productive and fulfilling in the long run. Imagine a colleague constantly needing to one-up everyone in meetings, or a friend who always has to get their way. Missed opportunities, an overly competitive win mindset can blind you to potential partnerships, creative solutions, and the simple joy of collective success. It can damage relationships and create a toxic environment where people feel discouraged rather than motivated. The healthy alternative. This doesn't mean you shouldn't have ambition or be willing to compete. However, Covey encourages us to think beyond the immediate win, could a win-win scenario be possible, even if it requires some compromise or a different approach. Sometimes framing success in terms of personal growth and improvement, rather than outdoing others, leads to a more satisfying and sustainable path. Let's consider a few examples. The Project Dilemma. You're leading a team project, and a colleague proposes an idea you don't believe is the best. Your instinct might be to push for your own solution, regardless of their input or win mindset. A better approach could be to explore why they favor their idea, acknowledge its merits, and consider if blending concepts might lead to an even stronger outcome a win-win mindset. Negotiating a raise, asking for more money is natural a win mindset. However, fixating solely on the highest possible number can create tension. Instead, consider framing the negotiation as a collaboration you're demonstrating your value and finding an agreement that feels fair to both sides seeking a win-win. Lesson 11. Win-win, or no deal the power of high standards. The win-win or no deal mindset is based on the deep belief that any agreement should be mutually beneficial and satisfying to all parties involved. But here's the key you must also be willing to walk away if those conditions cannot be met. Think about the last time you made a major purchase, negotiated a complex contract, or even asked for a date. Did you have a clear understanding of your own priorities and what would constitute a truly fair outcome? Were you prepared to say no if the deal offered didn't align with your needs and values? The win-win or no-deal mindset stands in stark contrast to compromising just for the sake of making an agreement 
or settling for less than you deserve out of fear of conflict. It's about respecting yourself and your needs as much as you respect those of the other person. Here's why this approach is so powerful. It sets higher expectations, it shifts your focus away from simply getting a deal to finding the right deal. This higher standard can elevate the quality of your relationships, business dealings, and overall experiences. Attracts like-minded people when you're willing to walk away from unfair situations, you signal that you won't tolerate being taken advantage of. This naturally draws in people with integrity who operate from a similar place of mutual respect. Long-term value win-win agreements are more sustainable and resilient because both sides feel invested in their success. Conversely, if one party feels resentful or shortchanged, the deal is more likely to fall apart later. Of course, it's not about being rigid or unwilling to compromise at all. Life requires flexibility. Yet, the win-win or no-deal mindset helps you identify your non-negotiables and the areas where you can meet in the middle. Consider these scenarios. The job offer, you've received an offer that's lower than your desired salary and lacking some crucial benefits. It's tempting to accept just to have the job, but if you're truly committed to win-win or no deal, you might respectfully counter-offer, demonstrating your value, or be prepared to continue your search. The difficult relationship. Perhaps you're struggling with a friend or family member who frequently disregards your needs. Adopting this mindset could mean having honest conversations, setting boundaries, and being willing to step away from the relationship if a healthy dynamic can't be reached. Win-win or no deal doesn't mean being aggressive or demanding. It's about calmly and clearly communicating your expectations and being open to finding creative solutions. Lesson 12. Lose-lose the self-destructive path. The lose-lose paradigm is a bleak one, a situation where nobody truly wins. It might seem counterintuitive after all. Why would anyone intentionally strive for an outcome that harms everyone involved? Yet, this destructive pattern is disturbingly common in conflicts that spiral out of control. Think of the lose-lose paradigm like a ship sinking, dragging everyone on board down with it. It's fueled by emotions like bitterness, revenge, and an obsessive need to win, even if that means self-sabotage. Any shred of logic, long-term planning, or concern for mutual well-being gets tossed overboard. Here's where things get especially tragic. People caught in a lose-lose spiral often started with justifiable reasons for feeling hurt or wronged. Perhaps there was genuine betrayal, dishonesty, or an imbalance of power. But at some point, the focus shifted away from seeking resolution or justice and devolved into an increasingly destructive cycle. Examples of lose-lose scenarios can be found on both individual and societal levels. Bitter divorces. When couples prioritize inflicting pain on one another above all else, the result is often financial ruin, emotionally damaged children, and a deep sense of loss for everyone involved. Workplace sabotage office feuds can escalate to a point where individuals engage in harmful actions spreading rumors, deliberately messing up projects that damage their own careers and the company's overall success. International conflicts, wars, and long-standing territorial disputes can perpetuate cycles of violence and suffering for generations, leaving both sides worse off than when they started. The true danger of the lose-lose paradigm lies in its seductive power. When consumed by anger and resentment, it can trick you into thinking that bringing the other person down will bring relief. In reality, it's a trap. You become just as entangled in the negativity sacrificing your own potential for peace and well-being along the way. So how do you escape this pattern if you find yourself caught in its snare? Recognition, the first and most crucial step is becoming aware that you're in a lose-lose cycle. Ask yourself, have my actions moved beyond protecting myself or seeking justice and into a primarily destructive space? Disengagement, sometimes, the bravest and healthiest choice is to walk away, even when it feels deeply unsatisfying. 
If the other party is unwilling to break the pattern, continued interaction often only deepens the wounds. Focus on your own growth instead of pouring energy into causing another person pain. Shift your focus towards healing and rebuilding. This might involve therapy, pursuing new goals, or nurturing supportive relationships divorced from the conflict. Seeking a different kind of justice, distinguish between a destructive desire for revenge and a legitimate need for justice. Is there a way to hold the other person accountable for their actions through proper channels legal system, HR department, community mediation without getting sucked into a lose-lose dynamic yourself? Lesson 13. Seek first to understand, then to be understood the power of empathetic listening. Have you ever been in a conversation where you felt the other person wasn't really listening? They were just waiting for their turn to talk, formulating their response, or perhaps even interrupting before you finished your thought. It's a frustrating and often unproductive experience. Covey argues that one of the most transformative communication skills we can develop is a genuine desire to understand the other person before jumping in to make our own points. This isn't about simply being polite, it's a shift in mindset that can unlock stronger connections, creative solutions, and less conflict. Think of empathetic listening as wearing someone else's shoes for a while. It's setting aside your own opinions and judgments to try to see the world through their eyes. Here's why this is so powerful. Builds trust when people feel truly heard and understood. They're more likely to open up, share vulnerably, and trust you with their true thoughts and feelings. This is essential for both personal and business relationships. Reduces misunderstandings. How often do arguments stem from misinterpretations? Empathetic listening allows you to clarify assumptions, ask questions, and catch potential miscommunications before they escalate. Fosters collaboration. When both sides feel understood, it's easier to find common ground and solutions that honor everyone's needs. This is crucial for successful teamwork and negotiations. Enhances personal growth. Truly listening to perspectives different from our own stretches our minds, exposes us to new ideas and cultivates a less judgmental worldview. Of course, empathetic listening is easier said than done. It requires patience, focus, and a conscious effort to quash the following tendencies. Advising, jumping in to offer solutions before fully understanding the problem. Probing, asking a barrage of questions that feel intrusive rather than genuinely curious. Evaluating, constantly judging the other person's thoughts or feelings as right or wrong. Interpreting, analyzing their motives instead of letting them explain their perspective. So how do we become better empathetic listeners? Covey offers a few key techniques. Focus fully, put away your phone, minimize distractions, and give the person your full attention. Reflect back, paraphrase what you hear them saying, both the content and the emotional undertones. Example, it sounds like you're feeling frustrated and unsure how to proceed. Is that right? Ask open-ended questions. Encourage them to elaborate without leading them in a particular direction. Embrace silence. Resist the urge to fill every pause. Allow them time to think and process their feelings. Stay non-judgmental. It's not about agreeing with everything they say. It's about respecting their right to have their own experiences and perspectives. Lesson 14. Synergize. Unleashing the power of collaboration. Imagine a world where one, one always equals three, or maybe even five or ten. This is the promise of synergy, the phenomenon, where the collective outcome far exceeds what any individual could have achieved alone. Covey believes synergy is the pinnacle of effective interaction, but it requires a fundamental shift in mindset. We need to let go of the idea that collaborating equals compromise, settling for less, or sacrificing our own viewpoints. True synergy isn't about splitting the difference, it's about uncovering new and better solutions that transcend what any single person could have envisioned. 
Think about these examples of synergy in action. The breakthrough scientific discovery, scientists from different fields come together, each with their unique knowledge and methods, to solve a complex problem that had baffled them individually. The business merger that works two companies realize that by combining their strengths, one with a great product, the other with superior marketing, they can create exponential growth that neither could achieve alone. The a hey moment in brainstorming, team members build on each other's ideas, sparking unexpected tangents and breakthroughs that the most well-prepared individual presentation couldn't match. So what's the magic recipe for creating this kind of synergy? Here are some key ingredients. Diversity, gathering people with different backgrounds, expertise and problem-solving styles increases the chances of finding innovative solutions. Think outside your usual circles. Mutual respect, synergistic collaboration, depends on genuine respect for each person's contributions. Even if you don't initially agree, being open-minded and suspending judgment creates space for unexpected value creation. Win-win mindset, when everyone's focused on finding mutually beneficial outcomes, they're more willing to think outside the box, take risks, and invest effort beyond the bare minimum. Open communication. This means honest sharing of ideas, constructive feedback, and a willingness to address differences head on in a respectful way. Humility. The most brilliant people often recognize the limits of their own knowledge. Of course, synergy can be messy and challenging. It requires patience, a willingness to let go of needing to always be right and dealing with the inevitable clash of personalities. Here are some common barriers to successful collaboration. Ego, people who crave individual credit, need to be the smartest in the room or can't handle criticism, will sabotage the synergistic process. Control issues, the need to micromanage every step or impose a rigid solution from the top down quashes the potential for creative breakthroughs from the group. Mistrust if team members doubt each other's intentions or don't believe everyone has a voice, they'll play it safe and synergy won't happen. Lesson 15. Sharpen the saw. The importance of renewal. Covey uses a powerful analogy to illustrate this principle. Imagine a woodcutter who works tirelessly day after day with a dull saw. He's frustrated and exhausted, but stubbornly refuses to stop to sharpen his tool. He's sacrificing long-term productivity and joy for the sake of short-term, frantic activity. Similarly, we humans have an array of saws that need regular attention to keep us operating at our best. Covey highlights four key dimensions of our being. The physical. This encompasses everything related to our body's exercise, nutrition, sleep, and stress management. Neglecting our physical selves leads to burnout, illness, and decreased mental clarity. The mental, our minds need nourishment too. This includes reading, learning new skills, creative pursuits, and expanding our horizons outside our usual work domains. Stagnation leads to boredom and diminishing returns. The social-emotional, we are social beings. Investing in meaningful relationships, developing empathy, practicing kindness, and contributing to our communities enriches our lives and helps us stay resilient through challenges. The spiritual, for some this means traditional religious practice. For others, it's about connecting with nature, finding a sense of purpose, meditation, or deep contemplation. Nurturing our spirit provides an anchor when life gets turbulent. The tricky thing about renewal is that it rarely feels urgent in the present moment. It's tempting to put off that workout, skip reading for personal growth, or cancel social plans in favor of squeezing in more work. Yet, this neglect chips away at our well-being until we become a less effective version of ourselves. So how do we make renewal a priority? Recognize its value. Don't view renewal as a luxury or something you'll do when you have time. See it as an investment in your most important asset yourself. A well-rested, curious, healthy, and balanced person will accomplish far more in the long run. Build it into your routine, 
schedule activities that nourish each dimension of your being, just like you would important work appointments. Even small acts of renewal can have a significant impact over time. Experiment. What truly refuels you? It might not be the same things as your friend or coworker. Think of recharging like designing a personalized wellness plan, not a one-size-fits-all template. Embrace balance. Don't swing between extremes of working yourself to the bone and then completely neglecting your responsibilities for days on end. Consistent. Moderate renewal practices lead to more sustainable well-being. Consider these scenarios. The stressed-out executive, always on his sacrificing sleep, family time, and any sense of inner peace for the sake of his career. Adopting a renewal mindset helps him realize that taking breaks, delegating, and nourishing his mind and body will ultimately make him a more effective leader. The creative burnout, a talented artist becomes stifled, uninspired, and resentful of her work. Conclusion, the journey to extraordinary effectiveness. Throughout our exploration of these powerful habits, we've uncovered a path that goes far beyond simple self-improvement techniques. It's a transformation of mindset and approach, laying the groundwork for a more fulfilling and impactful life. Let's revisit the essential building blocks of this journey. Embracing your agency, you are not a victim of circumstance. Proactivity is about recognizing your power to choose your reactions, focus your energy, and create the life you desire. Craft a personal mission statement that illuminates your values and purpose. Let it be your guiding star in moments of uncertainty. Prioritizing what matters. Time is your most precious resource. The art of putting first things first is about consciously aligning your actions with what truly contributes to your long-term goals and well-being. Be ruthless with your time and learn the liberating power of saying no. Seeking the win-win shift away from a scarcity mindset. Mutual benefit is possible in most interactions. Whether you're negotiating with clients, collaborating with colleagues, or navigating complex family dynamics, a win-win outlook creates trust, fosters long-lasting relationships, and opens doors you might never have considered. Understanding before action, how often do conflicts stem from feeling misunderstood? Empathetic listening cultivates connections built on respect. Set aside judgment, prioritize genuine curiosity, and see the world through another person's eyes. The results may surprise you. The magic of synergy, when diverse minds come together with a willingness to transcend their individual limitations, the results are extraordinary. Embrace differing perspectives, cultivate open communication, and dare to believe in solutions that exceed any one person's potential. The gift of renewal, neglecting yourself, is a recipe for burnout and resentment. Nurture your physical, mental, emotional, and spiritual well-being as fiercely as you work towards your ambitions. True effectiveness is sustainable, fueled by a balanced and integrated approach to life. The path begins now. Oh. These habits are not a magic pill or a quick fix. They are a way of life, a continual process of growth and refinement. Some will come naturally to you, while others will demand conscious effort. The key is to start. Choose one area where you feel the greatest pull for change. Do you yearn to take back control of your schedule? Do you long for deeper connections through better communication? Is there a part of yourself that craves creative expression or a greater sense of purpose. Keep a journal to track your progress. Notice your victories, both big and small, and learn from your setbacks with gentle curiosity. There is no shame in stumbling as long as you get back up, armed with deeper self-awareness. Remember, the best version of yourself is waiting to be discovered. It's a lifelong adventure filled with challenges, breakthroughs, and the deep satisfaction of living a truly effective life. You are not alone. Connect with others who share this desire for growth, celebrate each other's wins, and find support during the inevitable challenges. The journey is far sweeter when shared. I believe in your potential. Go forth and make an extraordinary impact, both on your own life and the world around you. 
Click the link in the description to start listening today for the rest of our audiobooks collection. See you until next time.